I have campaigned for him uh, in uh, rural Iowa, in northern Nevada. I mean, they got me out in the, in the boonies everywhere, in central North Dakota in the wintertime, okay, in the middle of December, northern Minnesota in the Iron Range, Wisconsin. Uh, well, and, and par for good reasons. I'm from Hawaii. So they figure it's a draw, right, in rural North Dakota. Who would be crazy enough to come to North Dakota in the middle of winter from Hawaii? Let's go see this curious person. And uh, so that's what it is, especially because we've already called them five times asking them to, to vote for Barack Obama. And maybe if he makes a call and says he's from Hawaii, they'll say, this is a trick, right? to get me to listen to you on the phone because you're from Hawaii. Who would be mad enough to come to North Dakota? So it was, that's part of it. And, uh, and, and, and as a result, I've had this exposure to an extraordinary cross-section uh, of the United States and its people over these past months uh, to account for this phenomenon. The reason for this, and the reason for this, this, this phenomenon that has hit, has hit Senator Clinton's campaign, uh, is, you know, how can this be? Where did he come from? What's it all about? It has to do with decades of hope, decades of frustration, decades in which people said, when are we going to really live up to way, uh, what we say? When are we going to become who we are, who we say we are? What is this all about? And the combination, the presentation of self by Senator Obama is such that there is this wave of excitement and stimulation and, interestingly enough, belief so what has happened here, the phenomenon here, is the single greatest, uh, de most destructive element of the falsehoods that we have about ourselves in life, race, is now being confronted by this campaign because the opposite reaction is set in, one of hope and optimism and, and, and a sense that the page of history is about to turn in a positive way. And people wanting to participate in it and feel they are participating in it, and by participating in it, they're not a sucker. They're not a sap. They're not a fool. That it's real and it's tangible. It has three dimensions. And so that's the phenomenon that's taking place. Now, how it works out and whether it will work out, I don't know. Everything's trying to pull it back down. Everything is trying to trivialize it. Everything is trying to parse it and shape it and twist it in such a way as to make you think you are a sap and you are a fool and that it's not real and that it won't work and that it inevitably will collapse. Everything is working then to try and bring you back to the, to the everyday perception of politics as, a, as a one big hustle, as a, as a corrupt enterprise that, that has no possibility of redemption. And so as a result, when you see, when you experience, as I have this phenomenon of, of people believing again in themselves, it comes down to a basic fact that I think speaks well of Hawaii and which the senator spoke about himself in this regard. Here our diversity defines us rather than divides us with all of the difficulties that we have, with all of the pressures to do otherwise and to think otherwise and to act otherwise. Basically, those of us who live in Hawaii want to believe and want to act on the principle that our diversity defines us rather than divides us. We see what happens when diversity divides people elsewhere. You don't have to look further than Kosovo. Yesterday, I've been to Kosovo. I know what's going to happen. I know what's underway there. Division. Look at East Timor. Look at Palestine and Israel. Look at, uh, at Chechnya and, uh, and, and Russia. Uh, look at, at all the divisive, uh, 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 all, of the, all of the divisions, all of the, all of the confrontations, all of the conflicts that end up in, in blood and torture and horror and pain and killing and threats. Look at, the look at the foreign policy of the United States right now. As I, I, as I indicated, our fist in the air. You're with us or against us. We'll pound you senseless. Get in our way, we'll show you. You don't do what we want, the consequences are there. The military option's not off the table. You see, this is what's being confronted now with this campaign. This is what this is about. Our diversity, we want to say the diversity in this world will change it. Will, that will change, that we'll have a changed perception. I can tell you this in my travels as a member of Congress. People all around the world are hoping this campaign is going to turn out to have a new president and it's going to be the senator. Again, I'm not giving you a speech for him. I'm, I'm telling you this is the objective facts of, of, of existence. 
people all around the world believe that there will be a new way of looking at them. That they will be seen as persons whole. As they will be, they will be understood to have aspirations and, and, and a desire for life that they will not be just put into those categories. So the conclusion that I have for you today is with this, this truncated, as I say, in this brief history of, of race and politics, not only in this country, but, but, but the, the, uh, the, the consequences for the world right today, is that we now have an opportunity, I think, to change the very definitions of what constitutes politics today, to uh, reinsert ourselves as, as human beings into the political process in a way that gives us all a sense that our participation is not just abstract and academic, but real and vital in our lives. And that's an exciting place to be. And uh, I can tell you, as someone who has come decades waiting for this time, it's a wonderful and rich time to be. Political science study is about to become political science reality, and you can be a part of it. Thank you very much.